Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Guitarsenal. Today we're going to be making a video that's a little bit outside of the norm, but I'm, I'm hoping that maybe it'll help some of you guys. And it's not necessarily music related, but it is related to music gear. And if you give me a second, I think you'll come away from it a little bit more informed and hopefully you'll make better decisions when it comes to how you store your gear. It's very, very, very important, guys. Give me just a few minutes to explain and maybe you'll see it from my point of view. Um, you know, instruments are just like any other type of valuable. Uh, you know, you don't want to store them in the wrong conditions. And I know a lot of people tend to think, oh, I'll just throw my guitar in the back of the truck or I'll, you know, maybe you have a travel guitar. It's kind of a cheap one that's a beater and you don't care what happens to it. Um, that's okay. That's uh, certainly all right. We all have beater guitars that are like that. We're talking about investment grade instruments. I mean, like the studio we have here, you know, we have a considerable amount of investment in uh, gear and guitars, amplifiers, effects. And you want to keep those things safe from harm and you want to keep them in good working order. You want to ensure that they're not subjected to uh, bad temperature control and humidity control that can definitely degrade not only the playability but in sometimes the structural integrity of amplifiers and guitars to have to be kept in very strict uh, storage uh, to main maintain their playability and you know oftentimes especially with acoustic guitars you have acoustics that have you know certain types of glue that are employed and obviously you know you get too high in the temperature that glue can melt and bridges can separate, sometimes necks can separate. So you never want to store your acoustic instruments in a hot environment that can melt any of those glues. That could be very bad. You don't want to have to have a neck reset. Uh, also, there are certain humidity uh, areas. A lot of people tend to think, oh, well, if I have my guitar in a completely humid free environment, you know, they'll run a dehumidifier and get all the humidity out of the air thinking, all right, well, if there's no moisture, there can't be a problem. Um, guitars are kind of like cigars, right? You know, you have a humidor you put cigars in because you have to maintain a certain humidity level or your cigars will dry out, right? And they just, they won't, they won't do right. They won't taste right. They just won't maintain their freshness and their flavor. Instruments are the same way. They need to be subjected to a level of humidity, not a lack of humidity. Um, so I would strongly recommend the use of a gauge. Like I've got one of these gauges over here that you just keep plugged in the wall and it gives you a temperature readout. It tells you what the temperature is outside and inside and tells you what the humidity is inside and outside. You want to strive for a temperature between 65 and 70 degrees and you want to strive for a humidity level between 40 and 45 percent humidity. You do not want to go higher on the humidity and you don't want to go lower on the humidity. If you start getting too humid, uh, you'll get excessive moisture buildup in the room and you can get mold on your speaker cones. You can get uh, mold behind picture frames. You can get mold on your guitars themselves. You do not want mold. Mold is the enemy. Mold will destroy your, your stuff. Remember guys, a lot of the speakers, especially in these vintage amps, I mean they're made out of paper. It's just paper uh, cones, right? So th that paper can attract moisture and it can it can mold and you don't want that. You know, you, you have a vintage amplifier or a collection of amplifiers that you've worked very hard to invest in and you spent your hard-earned money on, you want to protect those investments. Okay, so how do we control this? Well, a lot of it depends on the environment that you're in uh, has a lot to do with it. Um, the needs for somebody way up north uh, versus way down south, which we're here down in Georgia, our needs are going to differ from somebody way on the west coast in California where it's kind of dry all the time versus up north where it may get really dry during the winter but then maybe not so humid during the summer. Depending on your location, you may have to employ, depending on the time of year, dehumidifiers, humidifiers, and then air conditioning. Okay, so like right now, at the time that I'm making this video, I'm going to use this as an example. We're using, um, you know, we're right here in, in winter time. So outside, you know, it's, you know, 28 to 35 degrees in the morning. Well, you don't want to come up here and be able to see your breath in your studio, right? The rule of thumb is if, the, you're, if you wouldn't be comfortable sleeping there, neither are your instruments, okay? So you need to treat it like that. So if you would want to sleep in 30 degrees with no humidity or whatever, it'd be very uncomfortable, right? Well, you have to think, then your instruments are uncomfortable. Your adjustments on your truss rods will flex. It can, in some cases, bow your necks, especially rapid temperature change. That's something else you need to be wary of. If you have your instrument in a cold car or something like that, which you shouldn't, 
But let's face it, some of us have before. If you've left your instrument in a vehicle overnight and it's really cold or something, you take it inside. You don't want to just immediately remove it from the case and subject it to like this just picture perfect, you know, 70, 75 degrees in the house with 45% humidity after it's been out in the cold weather with no humidity or whatever. You want to acclimate your case, bring it inside and allow it to slowly come up to temperature with the instrument in the case. And then once the case is no longer cold to the touch, then open it. Leave it open, and again, wait another 30 minutes. I, I would leave my guitar in a case an hour before I even think about taking it out, because those rapid temperature changes can cause the neck adjustments to get out of whack, and you don't want to warp your neck, especially on an expensive guitar or vintage guitar. Guys, treat them with respect. They're getting older. You, you know, you got to take care of your stuff. So how do we deal with this? All right, so for instance, it's like 28, 30 degrees outside in the morning when we come, you know, out or whatever. We have to run a heater. Okay, so the heater controls the temperature, right? So we've got our temperature 65, 70 degrees. Cool. Everything's great. But what does the heater also do? The heater also dries out the air in here. You can't have the air too dry, so I have to run a humidifier, okay, to keep the humidity level in here consistent with the numbers I gave you earlier. And then what I also do, I'm actually out of it right now. I've got to order more of it, but this is, and I'm not suggesting you have to buy this exact product but I actually use a solution that I add to my humidifier and it has microbial, um, microbial prevention in it. You know, it's supposed to kill microbials and germs and it's also supposed to prevent any type of mold. Uh, you do not want mold on your stuff. So this is an anti-mold and microbial agent that I add into my, dehumid or to my humidifier. So as it's purging the air with humidity, it is also adding this in there so that we don't get any mold or any kind of odd things going on. That's not good. That is not what we want, okay? So that's what you're going to do when it's cold, but that's just in my particular situation. I know in other parts of the world where the winters get really, really cold and they have to run the heat, it can dry out the furniture and they have to run humidifiers in the house to keep the furniture from cracking and drying out. If the humidity gets too low and the wood gets too, uh, let's just say, dry, it can crack and split just like a fine oak table or whatever. You definitely don't want that happening, okay? So that's something to consider. Now, what do you do during the summer? Well, obviously, we have to run a, a uh, air conditioning unit to keep the temperature in here 70 degrees when it's 110 degrees outside with 100% humidity. So see, there's another extreme swing. You don't want really, really high humidity and really high temperature. That's very bad. Because not only, we mentioned before, the high temperature can cause glue and neck separation and adjustments to not take. It's just not good. And then the high humidity can have the exact same result. It can cause the wood to warp. When they work wood, a lot of times they'll wet the wood to work it or they'll soak the wood to work it because it makes it softer sometimes. Like, I know you've seen probably fixtures where they, they bend wood. They have to wet the wood in order to bend it in the fixtures and then they dry it back out, that kind of thing. You do not want high humidity subjected uh, to your instruments. You want the humidity to be controlled. So in the case here, in the summer, we have to run a dehumidifier to remove moisture from the air and it stays set at 45% humidity. Each morning, I'll come out to the studio and I'll check. I'll make sure our temperature and our humidity is good to go. All right, so that is probably the most important thing with storage. I really wanted you guys to kind of heed my warning a little bit because you start in investing money in equipment. You don't want your equipment to go south. You want it to hold up well, and serve you for years to come. And that's the best way. A lot of times, if you go to a music store, you'll see that they employ the use of a humidifier. They employ the use of temperature control to make sure. Like, that's why when you go to Guitar Center, there's an acoustic room. And you notice, look in there. You'll see a humidifier or a dehumidifier, and you'll see where they're trying to control that temperature and that humidity, especially on acoustics. It's super, super important with an acoustic. Electrics are a little bit more stable especially when you're talking maple necks. That's why I tend to prefer maple necks because maple is a more stable wood than rosewood. And of course, here I am <laughs> playing an all rosewood neck. But th now, to be fair, this Strat has held up great uh, and it's held its adjustments just fine. It's a wonderful Stratocaster. And even though it's, a, it's an all rosewood neck, it's held up great. But I tend to prefer maple uh, for that reason because of its temperature stability and it has a generally brighter tone, which I prefer. With strats, they tend to be a little punchy. I really like a rosewood board on a strat. And I've gotten to the point where I like a rosewood board on a telly too, but I don't own one yet. Uh, that's probably something I'm going to have to remedy at some point. Uh, it mellows it out a little bit. Anyway, 
Another thing I want to mention that's very important, if you do have nice acoustics or nice jazz guitars or things like that, I know here in my background I've got guitars essentially on display and that's for us, you know, this is a set for us to do videos on for you guys. When you're not using your guitars, you probably want to keep them in the case. Uh, not only will that protect them from damage, uh, and you know, you never know what might happen, you don't want them getting damaged, but it also protects them from rapid temperature and humidity swings and protects them from the elements of the room itself. So if you do have a spike in humidity or a spike in temperature, the guitar is going to be theoretically a little safer inside the case than it would just be out in the open. Okay. Also for acoustic guitar cases and electric guitar cases, they also make humidifiers, miniature humidifiers that you can put in uh, the case with the guitar to control the humidity just within the case. Those are helpful too. So maybe this will help some of you guys. Guys, keep your gear in good working order. It is so important. You work hard for your gear. We all love our instruments. Many of us have emotional attachments to our instruments. You know, they become a second child to us. You want to protect your gear and make sure that it's going to serve you for years to come. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen to me in this video. Maybe it helped some of you guys. I hope it did. Uh, keep your gear in good shape. Take care of it. It'll take care of you. One day you pass it along to your children, your grandchildren. It will continue to serve them for years to come. Uh, you know, so we have to remember that we're, we're just sort of the, the stewards of these instruments. They're going to outlive us, and we have to make sure that, we, that these instruments, that there's something left of them to pass along to somebody else one day when we're not here. And uh, I know that's a hard thing to think about, but I like to think in terms of, you know, the, I'm just a, a, a custodian of these instruments. They're not mine. They are mine now, but they're not always going to be mine. So I have to think about it in terms of, you know, passing them along one day to make sure the next person doesn't get something that's been uh, improperly cared for. Just my two cents. Uh, take it for what you will. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you learned something. I know this didn't uh, have as much playing in it. I want to play a little bit for you in the intro there, but uh, maybe you learned something. Let me know if you like this type of video. We'll be happy to make more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, we post every Monday and Friday here on Guitar Arsenal. Make sure you subscribe. We'd love to have you back. Uh, thank you all for the support. Uh, Y'all are great, and we'll see you next time. All right, I'll make a little bit more racket. Let you guys get back to your day here. <laughs>